Welcome to The Advocate, the program that keeps you educated and informed on current events around you. I will be talking about the desolation of a tribe. Omoni and Annie Marchand will be talking about the Naira redesign, the good. Olaemi Ejimai will be talking on different opinions. Elijah Felix will be talking about the impact of bigotry and political manipulations on the Nigerian democratic process. Today, expect interesting conversations as usual, and we will be back after the break. The desolation of a tribe. It's easy to say you are one of the other or to identify with your ancestry. Come on, that's the average thing we do. You could be Efik, Teeth, Fulani, Ijo, or Mangu. So whatever your bloodline is, we maintain that first before the country. We carry this so much on with so much gusto, it affects our social interactions from friends we make, marriages, relationships, politics, and business. Now I believe, till we step out of the canoe of ethnicity, we will never walk the waters of diversity. It's at very good at this point to note that the contraptions which we know as Southwest, South-South, Northeast, Northwest, are just things that are not protected by our constitution. The constitution only talks about Nigeria. So we are fed these parameters just basically for our own greed and probably a place on the buffet of the table of corruption. But as Nigerians, let's face the issues we pretend to avoid. Being a Nigerian in Nigeria is an extreme sport. Imagine saying you can run for an office anywhere in Nigeria during the just concluded elections, which is apparently our law. But guess what? You'd be mobbed on social media by the same people who celebrate Nigerians in Congress in the United States. Imagine being Nigerian and marrying from any part. It's okay with a few raised eyebrows till you seek political office or are in line for a traditional stool. That's when all falls down. What of Nigerians in America, US or UK, choosing to undermine the flag after seeking solace? We are happy for the opportunities you now have. But you cannot stir political violence in the name of succession or demarket the flag in tune with your newfound home and superiority of their race over ours. We have our problems as a country, and there are many which we all know. And they are, of course, embarrassing like every other country in the world. As Nigerians, we stand to gain more, developing a deep sense of citizenry until we realize that as the most populous black nation in the world, if Nigeria fails, the black race fails for the love of country. You know, this thing you just said now, I just thought about two key studies. Tell me. Key study one, the GRV issue, the Badibo Rose Vival. Some people call him Chinidu Badibo Rose Vival. You know, his mom, I, I watched his mom on TV, you know, during the election. She spoke, the mom is from Anambra State. His wife is also an Igbo woman, very intelligent woman too. Uh, but you saw what happened during the election. Some mischievous persons of the, um, majorly the all progressive congress in lagos they were using playing the tribe act card now uh, the way i would commend ashwa jitunubu is actually he tried to call these people to order at some point but then they need to do more you can't use tribe to destroy nigeria nigeria is bigger than any tribe mind you you cannot be a president if people don't vote for you from around the country now coming to lagos state you have residents in lagos state you want to become the governor of lagos state you need the vote for of everybody irrespective of their origin. But I think Nigerian as a country should focus more on what makes us, what is important, which is to be a Nigerian, identifies in Nigeria. The second case study is the case study of the issue of Simon Ipa. You know who Simon Ipa is. Simon Ipa identified as a so-called IPOP chieftain, right? But this man is in Finland. He's a politician in Finland. He was, he's a lawyer doing very well and he became a politician in Finland doing very well when you said superiority of the race where you are over Nigeria you are ben you are benefiting from a country that you are not originally from your ancestors are not from there they allowed you to be in their space to contribute to their leadership growth governance and then you come to your country you are destroying your own country playing the tribal card it's a very terrible thing 
same Nigerians that are shouting, oh, Jerry V, you are not a Yoruba guy, or this one, you still want to hail someone that is a Yoruba or an Igbo, being governor or politician in UK or US. Is that not, is that not hypocrisy in the highest order? I completely agree with so you. So that's, we should be very careful. We should and be very careful like in Nigeria. I like the fact that he's taking it from a local perspective. I'm going to look at it from the other side. When you are a Nigerian in, an, in a foreign country, it is appalling to see what they do on social media. I personally, I believe since you are not in Nigeria, the best you can do is to pray that everything goes home, goes on well at home. Exactly. There is no need pushing. Hitting up the quality. Hitting up the quality. That's here. the word. And every time I read it on their social media, and I'm like, but you are not at home. You are not at home. Why do you do this? Because you're not going to vote. You don't have the PVC. And you're actually fanning the flames of this disunity. Of what benefit is that to us? Why don't you create an atmosphere if you support a candidate or you don't like what is going on? All I do is, today, Nigeria, you're on my mind. Nigeria is in my prayers. Don't, when you are not in Nigeria, don't make it worse to, for people in Nigeria. Because at the end of the day, we are Nigerians. That is who we are. And you cannot claim to be from another country or claim to love another country more than you love Nigeria. You, you know, for me, the way I look at it, it always surprises me seeing what Nigerians abroad do. But what's most surprising is what Nigerians in Nigeria do. And this is funny. We mortgage the issues and blame politicians for it. Oh. Politicians are not to blame. Politicians, I, I, I've been one, so I understand. Politicians okay. only trigger what already exists. What's in the society? If there is no tribal sentiment, no politician will come and out use it and against say, us. you've not played. So it will work. If there is no religious the sentiment. is the fact that many of us are closet tribalists. Mm. And uh, it, it's surprising that some of these people that you call that show these tra trends are people that have gone to federal government colleges, the schools in the north or east or west of Nigeria. They, they are people that you would expect to have um, had proper Nigerian integration. You know, you are, say, you, buy, you, you did your NYC in Meduguri and you had a wonderful time, or you are a northerner, you are Fulani, you did your uh, youth service in by Elsa or somewhere in the East, and you had a really good integration. But then you find that, that when we talk, you still find that we are primarily uh, either Yoruba or Igbo or Hausa or Fulani in our thinking, in our thinking about, about things that should be, that should be about competence and uh, and standards and, and things like that. So I, I think it's, it's one of those things that uh, personally for me uh, pains me when people who are supposed to know better, who are supposed to be enlightened, who are supposed to be exposed, and that includes those people that are, that are abroad, when they talk and you find that, hey, this guy is still a basic parochial tribalist. I agree. And um, sometimes, you know, it's, it's really sad how we have to deal with this. For me, um, I've always played the fact that I'm part of a tribe which is, you know, the smallest tribe in Nigeria, and that's being Nigerian. And, uh, you know, when you look at, when you even hear people discuss other tribes in Nigeria, you tend to know how exposed they are because you, you hear people assuming that everybody in the north speaks Hausa, which is not true. Or everybody <laughs> in one, or you call, uh, <laughs> you call somebody from Akwaibom, Kalaba. Yeah. You know, they, 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 <laughs> there, there are a lot of funny things. Also, um, from Bedou, they say Yoruba. Yoruba <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's, 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 it's a little funny thing. But, well, it's great and we hope the best for our country. Well, next we're going on to um, Omoni animation when we're back with the naira redesign the good thank you